We would like to thank everyone for coming out here today to honor the victims of gun violence and stand in solidarity with the rest of the nation. It is important for the world to know that just because we are kids, that does not mean we do not understand this issue. Since Sandy Hook, there have been over 200 school shootings with over 400 deaths. Parents have the right to send their children to school knowing they will come home alive. Students should not have to worry about if they are safe in their own classrooms. School is a place for education and growth, and fear does not belong here. We will not sit back and wait for others to bring change. We will join together with other students across the nation to fight for change. We will continue to fight until change arrives and gun violence is eradicated. We will work together to promote a safer community and safer schools in order to prevent another senseless tragedy. We stand here today to say, enough is enough. I'm now going to read a poem from Eden Hebron, which she wrote about her experience as being in the Parkland shooting. We walked into class together and sat down. It was Valentine's Day in our sweet Parkland town. We were laughing and doing our work, me and my best friend. But little did I know that five minutes later, her life would come to an end. I hear a sound. One, two, three, four, five. Gunshots. That's funny, Alyssa. Of course we will survive. We live in Parkland, I thought. How could this be? But sometimes your thoughts are not what you see. We run under the table in disbelief. I have my friends next to me. What a relief. They move to the desk to seek safe shelter, but I stayed there thinking the sound was just bad weather. I close my eyes and wait for my teacher to say it's a drill. But before I knew it, my door was shot through and I saw his first kill. Elena, Alex, Justin, then Alyssa. I'm next and this is not just paranoia. He went to the next floor and the next. All I could think about is, how many will be left? The screams blasting in my ear. The blood still won't disappear. I scream their names, call for my friends. Nothing else to do. They are gone. They are dead. Didn't think I would live my worst nightmare. I keep hearing shots and seeing gunpowder in the air. More and more, I find out died. I wish this didn't happen and he never got inside. No feelings, no emotion. How can you comprehend this traumatic distortion? There are no words to describe, nothing else to say that will justify my English class on Valentine's Day. Okay. I want to read another piece that was actually written by uh, yet another student from uh, the Parkland shooting, but this one was actually a victim. It was someone that passed away in the shooting a month ago today. His name was Alec, Alex Schachter. He wrote it shortly before he died. It's titled, Life is Like a Roller Coaster. Life is like a roller coaster. It has some ups and downs. Sometimes you can take it slow or very fast. It may be hard to breathe at times. You have to push yourself and keep going. Your bar is your safety. It's like your family and friends. You hold on tight and you don't let go. But sometimes you might throw your hands up because your friends and family will always be with you, just like that bar, keeping you safe at all times. It may be too much for you at times. The twists, the turns, the upside downs. But you get back up. You keep chugging along. Eventually, it comes to a stop. You won't know when or how, but you will know that it'll be time to get off and start anew. Life is like a roller coaster. Joaquin Oliver. Joaquin was born in Venezuela and came to America as a young boy seeking a better life. Known by his friends as Guac, short for Guacamole, his life was taken just a year after he became a permanent U.S. citizen. Alyssa Alhadef. Alyssa was 14 years old and played soccer for Parkland Travel Soccer. Her last words to her mother were, I love you. Scott Beagle. 
Scott was a teacher, a cross county coach, a counselor, a son, a brother, and a man soon to be married who died a hero. Martin Duque Anguiano. Martin was born in Mexico and is the son of Mexican immigrants. He enjoyed Star Wars, soccer, and he regularly attended church. Nicholas Dwarat. Nicholas was a 17-year-old senior who was recruited for the University of Minneapolis swim team and would have been an incoming freshman this fall. Aaron Fuss. Aaron was an assistant football coach and security guard. He used his own body to shield students as gunfire rang out in the school. Jamie Gutenberg. Jamie was 14 years old and loved to dance. She had been a dancer since she was two years old and loved every second of it. Chris Hickson. Chris was stoked. Chris was Stoneman Douglas athletic director. He was always willing to lend a helping hand and Hickson left behind his wife and two children. Sure. Luke was always happy, always smiling. His smile was contagious and so was his laugh. Kara Lawford. Kara was a student who always had a smile on her face. She was an excellent student and loved the beach and our state. Gina Montalto. Gina was only 14 years old and a freshman on Douglas High's winter guard <coughs> team. Like Jamie Gutenberg, Montalto volunteered with the Friendship Initiative, an organization with programs for children with special needs. Elena Petty. Elena was the youngest of four children and was remembered as the light of that family's life. She was an active member of the Parkland community, volunteering with hurricane cleanup efforts last year in Florida. Meadow Pollock. Meadow planned on continuing her education next fall at Lynn University. Her friend said she was someone you could always count on, with a positive nature and the ability to make the best out of any situation. Helena Ramsey. Helena had a relentless motivation towards her academic studies, and her soft, warm demeanor brought the best out in all who knew her. Alex Schachter. Alex was a sweet and loving boy. As a freshman, Alex loved the marching band and played the trombone as part of the Eagle Regiment marching band. Carmen Shintra. Carmen was a straight A student and a National Merit Scholarship finalist. She was only 16 and loved to play piano and read. Peter Wang. Peter was 15 years old and a proud member of the school's ROTC program. He was last seen in uniform, holding open the door for other students to escape. Many of us are going to ask ourselves in the next several days, what can I do? Where can I help? Well, my message is today that we can't all do something. And that is we must be a leader. We need to band together and communicate with each other. We have to be a leader in our own family. We have to make sure that we take time to talk to our parents, talk to our brothers and our sisters, communicate with them, share what's, what your concerns are in your life and what's going on. Lead by example here in your school. If you see someone in school that's struggling, that has an issue, you know, reach, stick it, reach out, helping hand out. We'll never know what a small difference, of just a simple act of kindness can make in someone's life. Uh, we must be a leader in all parts of our lives. Our job in life is not to bully or ridicule, but to mentor and help and make a positive influence in the lives of others. We know that the hearts of so many are broken and hurting today in remembrance of the 17 that were brutally murdered just one month ago. But know that we stand next to you with a message of hope and a message of healing. You are not alone, and our thoughts and prayers will be with you, and God bless. Enough is enough.